to the MRC Weatherall Institute of Molecular Medicine in Oxford. We're here today to investigate how scientists use antibodies as tools in their research. So first up, let's have a look at the microscopes. So this is Falk, he's an imaging expert here at the WIM, and he is going to tell us all about microscopy. Hi Falk, thank you for taking the time to meet us today. Can you tell us how microscopy works? Sure thing. So in uh, microscopy we use light and a set of lenses to magnify things we can't see with the naked eye. Oh cool, so how do you use antibodies in that? So with light we can only see non-specific labels, but if we use antibodies and we can tag our protein of interest specifically, we can figure out where exactly our protein is and we can also use multiple colors. Since antibodies specifically bind to one particular antigen, we can use them to specifically label proteins that contain that antigen. For fluorescence microscopy, we use antibodies tagged with a colored label called a fluorophore. When you shine a laser onto a fluorophore, it lights up in a particular color and special detectors in our microscope can pick up that signal. Companies can make antibodies specific for almost any protein, whether on the cell surface or inside the cell. Using different antibodies labeled with different fluorophores allows us to see where different proteins are in the cell. In this way, we can check whether two proteins are in the same place at the same time or not. Scientists call that colocalization. Spatial information like this are often important to figure out what a protein does or to find out what goes wrong in a disease. Okay, cool, but what does that look like in real life? Well, let me show you. So now I have some samples in the microscope, cells labeled with antibodies specifically against two different proteins. So let's have a look how that looks. So I turn on the microscope and we can see that we get signals from one protein labeled in purple and one protein labeled in green. And if I now overlay the signals, we can see that these two proteins do not co-localize. Wow, that's really cool. So how many proteins can you do at the same time? Um, so at this microscope we can do up to three, and others we can do four or five. Hmm, four or five, okay. Well, I wonder how many the flow cytometers can do. Let's go downstairs and check. Thank you, Falk, for your time. You're very welcome. This is Abigail. She's a flow cytometry expert, and she's going to tell us how that works. So, Abby, this is a really cool machine, but what does it do and how does it use antibodies? So, this is a flow cytometer and we use it to pick out specific cells from a mixture of different cells. Uh, like in microscopy, we use antibodies connected to four poles um, to detect specific proteins and identify specific cells. Um, unlike in microscopy, where you look down on the cells from above from lenses, um, we pick out cells as they run from the stream. Inside the flow cytometer, a mixture of cells labelled with antibodies is channeled into a stream of single cells. As each cell passes through a laser beam, the antibodies attached to the cell light up. The more copies of a protein the cell has, the stronger is the signal. The flow cytometry software records the signal intensity for each cell and builds a graph where each dot represents one cell. That's fascinating! So can you show us that in action? Sure! So, in this plot here, you can see the size of the different cells. When I select the, cell, the size of the cells I'm interested in, the software focuses in on this population. Over here, you can see the intensity of the cells in the blue channel. Wow, that's fantastic! So, how many colours can you do in parallel? On this machine, we can look at six different colours, but on our best machine, we can look at up to 28 different 28? Oh wow, that's a lot more than a microscope. Yes, but keep in mind that with flow cytometry, we can't find out where the protein is inside the cell. Okay, so what do you use flow cytometry for then? Different scientists use flow cytometry for a number of different things, uh, but mostly we want to look at how different types of cells respond to different conditions, like drug treatments or infections. Uh, another really useful thing about flow cytometry is you can actually sort the cells by their colour. So like in a bag of smarties, you've got different colours, you can pick out your favourite. 
Oh wow, so how does that work? Well, the sorting happens over here. Once you have circled the cells you are interested in, you can tell the machine to sort them into different containers. Then, as the cell passes through, the sorter will pick up into which of the circles it falls and push it into one or the other container accordingly. And the machine is powerful enough to do that for 5,000 cells per second. Oh wow! I already knew that antibodies are one of the most powerful tools the immune system has to keep us healthy. But today I've learned that they are also one of the most powerful tools researchers have to specifically label proteins.